If you've been thinking about hiring and you're just not sure where to start, today's episode is for you. It's time for the Becoming a Profitable CEO podcast, and it's all about providing you with the tools to succeed on this ever-evolving business building journey. My mission is to make sure you know you are not alone, that it is possible, and that you, yes, you can do this. You matter. The world is a better place for having you in it, and your voice is needed. I'm Teresa Cleveland, and I believe that we can all make a difference and that having a successful online business is one of the best ways to do that. Let's get to it. Today, we're talking about hiring. And as we have more and more people coming into the online space, I see this question come up in its simplest form. It's how do I know when it's time to hire? Followed by where the heck do I start? I saw this question come up recently in a Facebook group that I'm in. I'm curious, at what point do you need to consistently hire others in order to scale past a certain revenue amount? And like so many questions in life and especially our businesses, I believe the answer starts with, well, that depends. Several of the answers that were given were based on dollar amounts. Someone said 100,000 for sure on your own. I think it gets too stressful for most people after that. Someone else said, I broke seven figures with no help. Someone else said that they knew someone who has no full-time team and she does quite well for herself, that it is possible. And there were a variety of other answers as well. And I imagine any of them could be true for the right person. I'm of a slightly different mind. I believe it depends on a variety of things, including your skill level in different areas. I mean, sure, you can learn how to do a whole host of things, but is that really the best use of your time and resources? And you've got to ask yourself, what isn't getting done while you're learning that new thing? And how many more tasks are you adding to your ever-growing list? There are also the things that you may learn and still not excel at, and they can be a deterrent to attracting new business. I also believe it depends on your goals and where you are in your business journey. So like I said, I believe the answer to that question is, well, it depends. If you're willing to chat about it, reach out. I'm happy to brainstorm with you. However, you get to that decision. Fortunately, we've got Tasha Booth with us today from the Launch Guild, and she's going to share some things about happily hiring, as well as how embracing the idea that she would never again be the cheapest empowered her to move forward in her business. Now, I want to take a minute and apologize because we did, as we were chatting, fall into some jargon. The three terms we used were OBM, VA, and PM, which for some people could be ABC or XYZ. So just so you know, OBM is Online Business Manager, VA is Virtual Assistant, and PM is a Project Manager. And again, I do want to apologize that we didn't catch that during the episode. Let me tell you a little bit about Tasha, and then we'll jump into the episode. Tasha Booth is an agency owner, coach, and podcaster. She is the founder and CEO of the Launch Guild, a course launch support and digital marketing implementation agency supporting established coaches and course creators with course and podcast launches, operations, and systems management, as well as content management and repurposing. Her team is over 20 members strong and works together to support their clients in being able to focus back onto their zones of genius. Additionally, she mentors virtual support pros, virtual assistants, online business managers, and project managers who are passionate and ready to grow their businesses while living life on their own terms. Tasha is also the host of the How She Did That podcast. It's a podcast for virtual assistants, online business managers, and project managers to learn business and tech tips. She's an Air Force wife to her husband, Scott, stepmom to Grace and Meredith, and work-from-home dog mom to Stanley and Boomer. In her spare time, she watches true crime TV, sings karaoke, and tends to her organic vegetable garden. I'll tell you what, Tasha is a force to be reckoned with. She is building her empire with no excuses and supporting as many other female online business owners along the way as she can. And she's having fun while she's doing it. Let's listen to today's episode. 
Tasha, I've been so excited for this episode. You are out there getting it done left and right. I know I see a lot of people like, when did she sleep? <laughs> so, thank you. But I know we're both nap fanatics too. So, yes. You know. So excited to be here. And people ask me when I sleep all the time. And, you know, I go to sleep at 8 p.m. every single night. I get a good nine hours of sleep minimum every night and take like a 90 minute nap. So I think that that's that's the key to my success. There you go. <laughs> that nap is just like you get that second wind and it's like, let's go. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> So let's talk about something in your journey, a shift in your journey that somebody else out there might be struggling with that really made you look at your business differently and like take it to the next level. And we've had many of them, right? So anyone that you want to share is great. Yeah, I think the biggest thing for me was when I moved from being a solopreneur to owning an agency. So that was a huge shift for me. And the reason that that was so huge, twofold. Number one, it made me relook at all of my packages and pricing and realize that even as a solopreneur, I was majorly undercharging. Um, and even though I was making money, I was working so, so many hours per week because I needed to in order to be able to, you know, support myself and keep and maintain what I was making because I like I was undercharging so much. I think at one point I had 25 clients. Oh my goodness. 25 clients. And that was just me. And maybe I had one contractor at that point, like one team member, but 90% of it was me. And yeah, so it, it really made me think about, okay, if I'm actually going to turn a profit as I become an agency and have dedicated team members what do I need to do? How do I need to do that? And I think that the big shift in that was the money mindset piece. You know, first at first it was really around people won't pay that or people can't afford that. And when I got past that and said, you know what, we're just never going to be the cheapest ever, ever again. And that's okay. You know, um, I think that that was realizing that was, was super helpful and it allowed me to go into my next level. The other piece of that shift was not having to be a jack of all trades anymore. And so I think that my, what I'm really great at is the leadership piece, is the mentorship piece, right? Is the community building piece and finding really, really amazing team members. And I was never great at knowing how to do all of the things. I know that we're both, you know, we both have tech backgrounds and everything. So that was my lane. That was what I was great at. But when, when clients started wanting me to do copywriting and Facebook ads and design and all these other things, it was like, absolutely not. <laughs> but yeah, having like having a team that is basically a launch team in a box, just really feel supportive for the clients that we serve. I love that. I know people will ask me, like, do you do graphics? And I'm like, oh, I can't draw stick people. <laughs> I can't do it. No, I, can't. <laughs> I think you're absolutely right. Especially starting out, we go through that with the whole money mindset. I had a client that when she first came to me, she said, oh, you know, nobody wants to even pay, you know, this $10 a week thing. And I'm mm -hmm. like, I would look at that and say the people you've been in contact with would yeah. not pay $10 a week, but there are people out there doing what you do and crushing it, making a whole lot more. So absolutely, you know, yeah, exposure. And I know you're so good at that being visible, just being out there. And I see you consistently out there. Like something you pencil in like, oh, maybe I'll pop in this week. No, something. it's completely intentional. And my team every single week puts in, you know, visibility time in the morning and in the afternoon, Monday through Friday for me, because it's that important. Um, and I see it as the lifeblood of my business. And know that when I show up, people show up, you know, when I show up and am consistent, we consistently have a client pipeline. And so, yeah, it's a, it's a non-negotiable for me. So it goes back to some of those core things that we hear about and kind of blow off. It's the no like, and trust. Yeah, absolutely. People see you out there. They know, number one, they can depend on you. And I think that's really overlooked when you show up here, you show up there, but then you don't for a while. And all of that, like, I don't think we as business owners, especially in the early days, realize when you do show up consistently, people are like, okay, she's here for the long haul, mm -hmm. right? Because it's not going to be like, oh, I'm getting into, it's like watching a really good show. You really like the show and like season six, it's canceled. <laughs> I know, which is always the worst thing ever. <laughs> right? Like, that like as humans are the people, our audiences and our prospects and our clients are watching that. And it's like, okay, she's solid. She's showing up. So yeah. I love that. And I love that you do it intentionally. 
Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I can't tell you the number of people that have been watching me or in my Facebook group or whatever for a year plus, you know, and then they see me and they're like, and I don't know that they exist. Like they're, they're those people that just lurk that hardly ever post or comment on my posts or anything. And then they'll reach out to me from nowhere and be like, can you just send me a contract? Like, can I, you know, or can I work with you or whatever? And I'm like, who are you? Where did you come from? And they're like, oh yeah, I've been following you for years. I'm just ready now. You know? Right. <laughs> that is so true. When people do that, it's just like when the timing is right. Mm -hmm. And that's when you were talking about, you know, keeping that funnel full and everything else. So it may not be this week. It may be next year. Yeah. And you're just showing up being you having fun, although intentionally, but having fun, people are enjoying you. And it's just like, oh, yeah, it's time, you know, yeah, everything's exactly. going into place. It's great. Well, Tasha, I know that you, you're right with the whole uh, leading in the team. And the, how many people do you have on your team now? I think it's 25. That's crazy. I know. But you know what the crazier part is? It feels so much better and so much easier than it did when I had three people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Because it's nice to have that fill in, right? Like not, oh my gosh, Susie's off next week and... Yeah, I have an org chart, an organizational chart that really works with how I work and has a flow that I don't have to be the pivot point or, you know, the bottleneck or the center of every decision or anything that's being done in my business. 25 people, you know, and I think that takes a special person to be mm -hmm. able to do that. Personally, I can't. It was for me, it was too many things. And while I could handle a lot of things at once, all of a sudden, you know, as a director of operations and online business manager, managing their teams, their clients, my, I tried, you know, I started, I had my team because a lot of people don't have that support. And I just, I found that that's really not my gig. So I really admire the fact that you can do that. And when you were talking about the launch in a box for your clients, I'm sure that that is, I thought about it. I mean, I, we do launches and I'm like, maybe we should just hire Tasha and her team. <laughs> Because that's just it, because I know you have the team and all of that. So even as another service provider, we're getting out of that in 2021. So I'm sure we'll be sending some people your way. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> that is the thing. It's like so many of our clients do come into this and they just don't know all the parts and pieces. Yeah. And that that's the biggest thing that we see that, especially if it's their first launch or even if it's they've launched before, but they've launched, you know, by themselves or just with a VA or something. And now they're like kicking it up a notch. They don't realize that. I understand like if you if you're not in launches all day every day you, you know there's no reason for you to understand all the components of a launch um, but I think the beauty of our team is that the fact that like we work together in our Slack channels day in and day out. And so we know how each other works, you know, and what each other needs in order to be able to help support our clients in really great ways. I think that's awesome. And it is knowing like, oh my gosh, I don't have to worry about things falling through the cracks. Mm -hmm. Right. So sometimes it's good that they've gone through that launch. It didn't do as well as they had hoped. And mm -hmm. now I, I always love when a business owner knows more about the process so that they don't just don't think it's flipping a switch. You know? Right. Right. Yeah. So they know there's a lot involved and they just need somebody who's an expert like you and your team to do that. What platforms do you have? Do you work at all platforms for launches and courses and things like that? Let's talk about courses. Yeah, yeah. So courses, courses, there's there's a few that we don't enjoy. And so we just don't work in them anymore. Um, we did a few where we worked in like Access Ally, Learn Dash, and built it like from the ground up. And those are great because you can customize to your heart's yeah. content, but the upkeep and the management and the maintenance on them is just insane. <laughs> and so we don't do that anymore. We we like all in ones. So a lot of times we're building on Kartra or Kajabi for our clients and also like Thinkific, Teachable, all of those are ones that we really enjoy for, for course platforms. Yeah. And it's everybody has their own space. And I love that. It's like, you've got your sweet spots. Mm -hmm. so I think they all have their place, but I know, especially right now with so many people who are so good at their thing, mm -hmm. but not tech and all the other stuff, the all-in-ones are a great way to get it out there, right? Yeah. Get it out there and get it done. Mm -hmm. So let's shift over though to your your leadership skills and all of that. Don't you have a course coming up? Yeah, so I just did the beta on it and um, we're now launching it as, it's basically a mini course, but it's all around that, that leadership piece. And especially when it comes to hiring because hiring the right people and figuring out who you actually need to hire is a skill set in and of itself. <laughs> yeah. And I tell people all the time, I wasn't like born with this amazing ability 
ability to hire. It was definitely something that I learned. And I would say probably my first three hires were what I call reactionary hires. And that means that I was overwhelmed, overworked. And I was like, I need somebody like two weeks ago, right? (laughs) So I'm like, who is the closest warm body? You know, I will pay you. (laughs) And of course, you know, spoiler alert, that did not end well and didn't work out well. But yeah, because of the team that I've had and the number of people that I've hired at this point, I've gotten really, really good at it. And so happily hiring is going to be all about how to figure out who you actually need and then how to find that person and also support that person as they come into your business. Because that's the other piece that is often missing, that support piece on just helping them be able to shine and really help you, you know, in, in the best way possible. Oh, I love that. My team, I love my team. I could not do what I do without my team. They make me look like a coherent, sensible person. (laughs) (laughs) And it is one of those things that I love working with them, but I've chosen them, right? So a lot of times, and I'm not doing the OBM DOO role anymore, you know, (laughs) I've phased out of that. But in that role, you know, you inherit team. So with my team, I love them. I just had two people this year that were with me like three and four years that wow. you know they've gone on to do some other things for themselves. And I love to see them grow like that. And yeah. they know that it's just having that environment, I think is wonderful. And being able to know as a business owner that you can hire exactly what you want rather yeah. than like so many do. And I've done it in the beginning. Like you said, oh, I need them two weeks ago. <laughs> And they come in and then they disappear or <laughs> you're chasing them down. And so now you just added more tasks to your list. Exactly. Exactly. And it never feels good. And I think one of the things that bothers me the most is when people say that they're looking for a quote unquote unicorn, you know, oh. And, oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. it's just you're setting yourself up for failure and disappointment because there's nobody out there who can be amazing at everything, even if they say they are. There's going to be things that, yes, they are amazing at, and there's going to be things that they're not great at. And so finding those two, three, four people that are amazing at whatever their lane is, instead of expecting one person to be able to fill that entire void is always going to be more supportive. And come on now, if that person gets sick. Yeah. What are you going to do? Then you're just left holding everything. So I don't think it's a smart business decision to put everything in one place like that. And... You know, to your point, it's so funny. I hear, I see you post things and, and I'm like, yes, <laughs> that thing my team knows like there are certain things, you know, they've been with me for a while. So they know, but that's one of my things. Every time I see a post, like sometimes I'll those screenshots and I'm like, unicorns don't exist. They don't exist. Yeah. <laughs> Stop you know, asking. Musical yeah. creatures. So <laughs> anyway, I told people that there will definitely be rants in this podcast. <laughs> So in doing this, and I don't like hiring, so I love that you're sharing this because again, I think it's important for people who are coming up and coming to that point in their business where they need to start hiring, Mm -hmm. right? To be able to do it thoughtfully and do it on a solid foundation from the beginning and build that culture and everything that you're talking about. So I love that you're going to have this. I know that what I've seen, and tell me if you've noticed this, what I've seen is that back to people being so good at their thing and like, I'm going to create a course, I'm going to create a business out of this. So they know what they know, but they don't know the rest. And then they start hiring, hoping that the VA or or the copywriter or whoever they're hiring will teach them what they should be doing business-wise. Is, is right. that, have you noticed that? I do notice that. And I think, you know, there there is because that person is coming in as the expert in their lane as a strategic partner in your business, there's a certain amount of understanding of the strategy and supporting that client and understanding like the why behind it. But I think at the same time, a lot of times it becomes what we call scope creep in that like, unless you're hiring a strategist, that person is supposed to be executing the vision that you already have, not creating the strategy or the vision for your entire business, right? I tell the service providers that I coach all the time that it's really important 
important that you know which lane you're coming in to support that client in. And if that starts shifting, to have a conversation sooner rather than later about that, right? It's not necessarily that you can't provide the strategy, but you should definitely be paid for that strategic part of it. So yeah, a lot of business owners, a lot of times are just like, well, what what do I do? You know, and I'm like, well, you can pay me to tell you what to do, or we can help you execute what you've already decided to do. And in fact, last year, we actually started including strategy as part of our launch package yeah. and just rolled it in because we found like, even though we said like, we're just, we're implementing, you know, we're support, we're managing and implementing, people would yes us to death and be like, okay, yeah. And then we'd be like, okay, how do you want to do this? And they'd be like, well, what do you think? You know, <laughs> And we're too nice to be like, well, we're not going to tell you what we think. Like you have to figure it out on your own, you know? And as business owners, and I think that's <laughs> Part of the mind shift that happens there as we grow is you realize, like, I still have to drive the bus. Yes. Mm -hmm. I still have to know where we're going. I love this course that you're doing because I think that's it is helping people understand why they're hiring. Mm -hmm. I've talked with people that they'll say, oh, just, you know, in conversation, well, what email marketing program are you using? And they'll say, oh, I'm, I'm using MailChimp. And, you know, I was using, <laughs> I was using Entreport or ConvertKit or, you know, something else. Uh, and I'm like, oh, that's interesting. You know, how mm-hmm. did that happen? Well, my VA said it's the best. And I, yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> well, it's probably the best for your VA. Yeah. Because yes, your VA knows that one. Knows, <laughs> but it's not the best. So I think that is it. So working, having someone like you come in and teach them why they're hiring and some of those things that they need to be able to say, this is it, right? Mm-hmm. This, this is how we do it. But out of desperation is where that comes from, right? I need, yeah. a, I need somebody. So, well, if they say this, then let's just do it. Let's just do it. Yeah. And not really understanding that. And I mean, it's not their fault. I know I've hired a couple of people at different points in my journey that it was just like, oh, that was so not. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. We all do it. And you know, I always say no judgment zone. We all do it. You live and you learn. Yeah. And when you know better, you do better, you know, exactly. but it's a matter of me wanting to educate people on like how to get the most out of their support pros. Because I think that there are so many times when like there's really good virtual support pros being hired by people and then they underutilize them and feel like they're not getting their money's worth. And it's not the the VA or the OBM or the PM's fault. It's really the business owner's fault for not having a vision of what support they need in the beginning. Right. And on the other side of that spectrum, there are tons of incredible clients in there. But on the other side of the spectrum too, we have, I'm sure you have run into in your journey as well, those who are just so rigid and they're not open to, it's like, but you hired me for my expertise. Yeah. And I can't continue to work with someone who is not open because I'm not effective. So, yeah. yeah. And, and that's why I, you know, I stress the fact that when you're hiring a virtual support pro, you're hiring a strategic partner, right? If I hire a plumber to to come into my house. Yeah. I don't tell them how to do their job. I don't say, well, are you sure that pipe actually needs to like go there? I think that this, you know, cause I know right. nothing about plumbing, you know? <laughs> here. Yeah. <laughs> and so I think it's really important to understand that, that relationship is not an employer employee relationship. It's a yeah. strategic partner relationship and they're coming with the expertise that you don't have. So listen to them. <laughs> and it's support. That's their yeah. end, supporting you. And they want to, that like the, your success is their success. Yeah. I think the unique differentiator that you bring to this is because you train mm-hmm. also, like you've got so many facets to your, your <laughs> I do. Like the building this empire, you train OBMs, PMs, and VAs. And so you also know that side of things. So it's right. I love that you're now doing this with the hiring because you're bringing that to share with the business owners mm-hmm. on how to do all of that. So what would you, what would your advice be to someone? This was actually a question that somebody asked, and we'll just throw it in here. Yeah. But how do you know it's time to hire? Yeah. And, and then, like, I know for a lot of people, there's that knee jerk that is just like, oh my God, I can't afford. Mm, you know? Yeah. And that's a whole other conversation. <laughs> Because yeah. how much more are you going to make once you do? But exactly, once you do. So I think that you know when it's time to hire when you are at 80% of your own capacity. And that could be, and also that you are, find yourself working more and more on things that somebody else could do in your business, right? So my goal for all of our clients and for people when they're hiring is that they get to stay more and more 
in their zone of genius, right? And that's the thing that only they can do. So for example, visibility is something that only I can do. I need to show up and do Facebook lives and, you know, record my podcasts and do coffee chats with people and all those things. But inbox management, like somebody else can go into my inbox and corral the chaos that is my inbox and answer questions that are in there and everything. And when I do the visibility, I make more money, right? The team makes more money. My agency and my company make more money. If I'm in my inbox and hiding basically in my inbox, that doesn't necessarily make me more money because it's something else that somebody else can do. So looking at those things, are you spending more time on things that you don't need to be spending time on? If the answer is yes, then it's time to at least prepare for that first hire. If not, you know, prepare and then seek out that first hire. And for those people, when you talk about preparing, that can be what? That can be as simple as starting to make a list of, I always yeah. think the things you hate doing that keep mm-hmm. you at the bottom of the list. Yeah. Yeah. Usually the indication is the procrastination because the procrastination is like, there's a cause for the procrastination, right? And usually it's, you don't feel confident because it's not your zone of genius or excellence or any of those things. So if you can get somebody to do those things that like, oh, they actually need to be done, like bookkeeping, for example, that was like one, you know, I was like, I could tell myself until I'm blue in the face that like every, you know, every week I'm going to sit down and I'm going to reconcile my books. And finally I was like, nope, I'm just going to hire somebody to do it (laughs) because it's never getting done. Because you get the reminder, mine comes up, I'm a a PC girl and Mm -hmm. Microsoft girl. So mine comes up in Outlook and it's just like, oh yeah, we'll just... (laughs) Oh, just, <laughs> I'll just do that. that. Yeah. <laughs> that's the same thing. And you pay attention though to those things. And rather than beating yourself up about it, no, there's a solution. Right. There's a solution. For that. And within this process, you know, because it is a mindset thing, but this prep is so important because I know the first time I hired, I didn't know what I was going to give them to do and where am I going to find the time to do that and all of that within your course do you and tell us about it is it a a course like do it yourself or are you working with people tell us how it works yeah so it's a DIY it's a do it yourself course definitely and a self paced one but um it starts off with a master class all around hiring and the four steps that you need to take in order to do it successfully and i think the thing that's special about this is it's the prep phase for it it's also the actual like how you post a job op, what you need to include in it and everything, how you go and do a discovery call with that VA or OBM or PM and what questions you should be bringing to the table instead of just them having questions for you or whatever. And then also how to onboard and support that new team member, because that is the part that I see fall apart nine times out of 10 when people say, oh, it didn't work out or like the hire didn't work out. When I start asking questions about like, okay, well, did you guys have like a weekly meeting? Like, did you have a daily huddle on Slack or, you know, just an email touch point as they were first coming on to your business? Like the answer is always no. And then I'm like, well, they, they didn't know what to do in your business. And of course it felt like you were wasting money or they weren't doing anything or whatever, because you never gave them the support that they needed. So we're going to talk all about the support side too. And then there's a bunch of templates in there as well. So that as you're doing all of these things, you have the pieces to help and support you. I love that. It is definitely a process. It's And when you have a process, which is no more than a recipe, mm-hmm. right? It's just like you go down the list and you're able to do it because we don't know what we don't know. And we're so busy doing the things that we already do that I'm sure it doesn't occur to some people to be like, oh, I should probably check in on them. Yeah. <laughs> they don't, and yeah. And the thing is like, you know, your business, like the back of your hand, right? Our businesses are our babies. We've, we've lived and breathed them since the first day we opened our business. And to expect somebody to be able to come in and magically know all those things in the first week is, you know, or the first even 90 days is unrealistic. So the more support we can give them, the better the outcomes. Oh, Tasha, I love so much that you're doing that. Mm. It is so needed out there. I see people, you know, I'm in way too many groups. <laughs> and I see people talking about that. They're just scared. They don't know where to start. And then mm-hmm. I see the other side where it's like, oh my gosh, that this happened. And what do I do now? But I also love that you're able to, you have this bank of incredible service professionals that you can refer people to. And is that part of it that you say, hey, mm-hmm. I think yeah. great. because it's nice to know they've already, that's like they've been vetted. Yeah. Out to you a couple of times to say, okay, this is what I'm looking for because I don't like the hiring thing. I oh, yeah. My least favorite <laughs> thing. So I would much rather reach out to you and ask you, like, I know you've, tra- they've been trained well. 
Mm, yeah. <laughs> you don't have to trust that they did some $27 course. And, right. <laughs> and all of that. So it's nice also for everybody listening to know that if they are looking for someone mm-hmm. and they're, they're, they think they're pretty good with the hiring that you also have resources for yeah. them. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. A great bonus for the, for the service professionals that you're training to have that. It's been super helpful for them because I know that, you know, I know that not everyone loves the visibility piece like I do. And even though I harp on every single student that I coach, you know, you have to get out there and everything. It's helpful to know that, you know, that there is a referral program um, to help them because yeah, there's a, there's a lot of great virtual support pros out there who need to be known more than they're known. <laughs> and I know with the level of professionalism that you have, that you're not going to refer someone, you know, again, there's right. that who, the know, like, and trust, right? Exactly. You establish yourself out there as a professional, training professionals, So it just trickles down and it's such a great resource. And I just want everyone listening to know that if you're looking for someone, this helps you over that one hurdle of, oh my God, what if they can't do what they say they can do? Right. Right. And not that you're responsible for them, not that it would come back to you, but they, I know that they've been trained, right? Yeah. Yeah. And we, um, on all of my programs, like they have all of my VAs, OBMs and and project managers have a form that they need to fill out where we need to see competency on, or that they've basically like set their business up as a business and really position themselves as a professional before they go on that list. So, but we always suggest that still do a discovery call, still vet them, still do a test project, whatever you need to do to feel comfortable in them moving forward. But at least like one of those layers has been removed. (laughs) Right. Just such a relief. And as a business owner, I know that is the thing because you have to be able to trust these people. Like this company has my name on it. Mm -hmm. And if you don't show up, like I'm going to make it happen. But that's not the role I want to play anymore. That's why I have a team. It's such a relief. So it helps get you over that hurdle to, okay, maybe I can try this. Mm -hmm. And we'll put all of your links in the show notes so that people can find you if they're looking for a professional and your uh, program. What's the name of the program again? Happily Hiring. Happily Hiring. So good. Thank you. So you. And that sound means it's time to ask some questions that I like to ask all our guests. First of all, other than your bottom line number, what's the most important number in your business? My impact. So I have an impact goal every year. 2020, my impact goal was uh, 300 women that I would like help support in their businesses. And I think we at least doubled that. So Mm -hmm. I always have an impact goal for each year in terms of how I want to support and make the world a better place. Oh my goodness. That is awesome. Thank you. And it's so nice to hear from people in different businesses. Someone the other day had mentioned that fun, Mm. how much fun they're having. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And why you don't have to think about that. We're so caught up in the metrics, which are totally important. Yeah. My team and I always set feeling goals as well. You know, when we're doing, when we did our our strategic planning for 2021, the first question wasn't how much money do we want to make? It was, what do we want to feel? Like, how do we want to feel? What do we want this year to feel like in our business? And I think that that's a huge, important part as well. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I love that you do the planning with the team. And that's also one of the nice things about having a team. (laughs) (laughs) You know, you have those people who can see things sometimes from different perspectives and help you with these things. I mean, ultimately, it's they're all your decisions and your responsibilities. But having these people who are invested in what you're doing is so tremendous. And all that's about hiring right, building the culture and everything else. So in this year of COVID, I still am like, we really say that. Uh, <laughs> In this year of COVID with every, you know, thing happening, and I know you like to travel and that's been not a thing this year. Not a thing. <laughs> so it's, I'm sure this question will change in time, but right now just living through everyone and now 2020, 2021, we're still dealing with all of it. What is your favorite vacation destination or experience? And I know you go a lot of places, mm-hmm. so you probably have more than one. So yeah, mine is Spain. I've been there twice and my goal in life is to own an apartment in Spain. But my husband and I, so we got engaged 
the day after Thanksgiving, uh, I guess like four or five years ago at this point, I can't remember. <laughs> so it's like, it's an important day for us. And every other year we have my stepdaughters for Thanksgiving. And in the years that we don't have them, we always go someplace like special. And so two years ago, we decided we were going to spend Thanksgiving in Spain. And it was just an amazing 10 days. We just rented an Airbnb. We basically decided what we wanted to do that morning, every morning, and mm. tried our best not to do like the touristy thing, you know? So it was like an offbeat street and we would just go and explore and everything. And it was so fantastic. And I can't wait to go back. This past year for Thanksgiving, we were supposed to spend Thanksgiving in Iceland and it did not happen, of course. <laughs> so the goal is maybe a Christmas in Iceland this coming year. We'll see, hopefully. All right. And it does not surprise me your spontaneity <laughs> at all. All right. Thank you so much for sharing that. I, it's interesting as people are sharing some of these, I get to go in and like check out places that I haven't been. And it's like, oh, let's just add that to the list. Yeah. <laughs> So from our would you rathers, our bank of would you rather questions, would you rather spend the day at an amusement park or lazing on the beach? On the beach. Okay. <laughs> get a nice nap in there. Yeah, get a nice nap. <laughs> All right, then. And then finally, what is a question that you would like for me to ask another guest on a future episode? That's where our question came from about the number in your business, which I think we're just going to make that a regular question. Oh, now. yeah. I love, I, love <laughs> Ooh, I love this. I would love to know what's one mistake they made that they wish they could go back and fix. And after they made that mistake, how did they course correct for the future? Ooh, nice. I like that a lot because a lot of people, I have not a lot of people, some people have asked, you know, what's a good book or what's something that you invested in that paid off, things like that. But I think we learned so much from mistakes. Oh, yeah. Thank you so much for asking that. Tasha, thank you for being here. It's been a pleasure. I feel like we've been best friends forever. I <laughs> do. I love it. <laughs> I hope to have you back sometime. There's plenty we can talk about. And I want people to check you out because you do so many different things that support online business owners. The timing is just right. There's just Aww. so many women out here. Also, we'll put your link in for your podcast. I like it so much. I was talking with someone the other day who said, 70,000, it's only about 70,000 women in this whole big wide world who are podcasting. That's Is amazing. That crazy? That's crazy. Yeah. So it's like, want us all to use our voices and thank mm -hmm. you for using yours and bringing your brilliance and light to this world. I uh, appreciate it so much. Thank you so much. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Becoming a Profitable CEO. I'll be back next week, but in the meantime, let's continue the conversation. Head on over to our Facebook group at thepurposefulceo.com forward slash Facebook and share your take on today's episode.